Today, I'm reading to you from uh, Cheryl's Last Stand, my first book. And I'm reading from the very first chapter, so I don't really need to explain anything. Hopefully, it all will make sense. Uh, so here goes. Cheryl sat in the front of, front of a mirror behind the bar of the Argyle Hotel. Sifty the barman was playing, islands in the stream, and Cheryl was working up to a sway. Dolly Park really hits the spot, don't she? Shifty said with a grin. Cheryl smiled and continued to sway until she heard Martin's, Martin's voice. Cheryl, thought it was you. Could hear you from the car park. She looked up to see Martin's reflection in the mirror and standing beside him was the reflection of Imogen. Cheryl smiled a lopsided smile and turned to face her ex. Cheryl! This is Imogen, said Martin. Imogen, this is Cheryl. Cheryl stared at Imogen. She had a body that defied gravity and a face that hadn't cracked a smile since Christmas. Cheryl took a long draw from her cigarette and stubbed it out. Dolly Parton had finished and so had a good mood. She watched Martin place his hand on Imogen's stomach and smiled a smile she had never seen before. I'm going to be a dad, he said. Cheryl woke five minutes before the alarm with a sort of hangover that made sleep impossible and any lying position worse than the last. Ten past seven flashed on a clock. Cheryl, boomed Beatrice. It's gone seven. I know. What? Cheryl rubbed her temples. I said... I know. Can't hear you, Beatrice continued, adding a small... <coughs> Cheryl spied a glass half full of flat beer. She gulped it down, hoping it, along with the rest of what was in her stomach, would stay still. Sam, the cat of unknown origin, sorted up the bed. Cheryl, you awake? Cheryl looked at the ceiling, wondering where else she would be at seven o'clock in the morning. Cheryl! Small snapshots from last night flitted into her mind and she groaned. She let out a huge belch, attempting a stretch, then gave up as her head began to spin. Beatrice eased herself upright and began hunting around for the television remote. Cheryl, any chance of a cuppa? Soon! Cheryl rolled onto her back and groaned. Beatrice flicked on the television with the remote and rewound last night's wrestling tape. Cheryl eased herself onto the side of the bed, pulled on a tracksuit, then made her way towards the kitchen, the only warm room in the house. Sam sprang off the bed and began charging in and out her legs like a ferret on speed, as Cheryl expertly walked around it. She flicked on the kettle, put bread in the toaster, and sat down with her back against the wall, waiting for her stomach to catch up with the morning's movements. <sighs> Nothing mattered, she thought. Nothing but keeping the contents of her stomach down and finding some cat food that didn't stink of fish. Beatrice watched the wrestling. Two huge men dressed in colours, only a large, muscular man could get away with circled the ring. They wore lycra so tight that the only one in the audience who couldn't see what was underneath was a short-sighted woman half asleep. Beatrice was almost in heaven. If only she had a tea. Cheryl shuffled into the bedroom. God, that's loud. One of the wrestlers grabbed a chair from the commentator's table and pelted it across the back of his opponent. The chair hit the wrestler's back and he fell onto his stomach. His limbs, limbs stretched out like a starfish. The standing wrestler looked up for a round of applause and when none came, he started to yell abuse at the audience. Good night last night, Beach, said Beatrice, noting her part, daughter's pastry complexion. Cheryl wondered if a cup of tea would be tempting fate. She forced a smile. It's about time you went out, said Beatrice. You've been moping around far too long. She tapped her daughter's knee, trying to appear positive. Not easy, with a face as comfortable with disappointment as Beatrice's. It was Rugby's birthday, Cheryl ventured. And he was looking for company. Ah, 
The mild whiskey, smirked Beatrice, picking up a piece of toast. She could just pitch the bottles lined up in the larder, and Mr Rugby's shaky hand pulling down one at a time, tenderly wiping the dust from the labels as he reached, read, read each one out. I remember his 65th birthday, said Beatrice. We almost made it to the knock and do. So you seduced poor old Rugby into a session, did you? How far did you get? About half of them didn't even taste any different. I seem to remember a particularly pleasant Lafroy, said Cheryl. I even helped him to bed. Though my mistake was to carry on to the pub. That's where things get blurred. I gather you met him then. And how did you gather that, Mother? You staggered in moaning that song you constantly played after the splits. Shifty song, muttered Cheryl. Beecher swallowed her toast. I thought we had a chance. I thought the split was temporary. Then I met. She jumped off the seat and raced to the toilet. I met her! <laughs> That's right, Cheryl. Better out than in, said Beatrice, as she turned up the wrestling tape to drown out the sound of wrestling. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope we didn't put you off hangovers and a night out in the pub. Um, and I hope you want to read more of Cheryl's Last Stand, my very first book, the very first chapter. Until next time, happy reading.